Father, we thank you this day. We thank you for allowing us to come to this place for the purpose for which you have allowed us to come. And that is to worship, to praise, and to exalt your name. Father, we thank you for this body that you have formed here on this hill. We thank you for allowing us to fellowship with you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be at peace with you. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for giving us peace. Father, we ask now that you will Use our mind, heart, our tongue to speak what thus says the Lord. And we'll be careful to give you the praise that only you deserve. We'll be careful to acknowledge your honor and your glory. Thank you for being merciful and kind, compassionate to us. Now, Lord, use us. Take us out of self. Let me and women see Jesus and not this speaker. Let us hear your word as you've given it. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. If you start counting your blessings and the more you count the more appreciative you will become. Someone mentioned one time they said if I had a thousand tongues I couldn't say enough. And someone came back behind that and said, why don't you do it with the one tongue you do have? Count your blessing. But the Lord has blessed us in a tremendous way. The Lord is good to us. The Lord is blessing us down in the country where you say right now, but I, I know you, you know what I mean right now. He's blessing us. This morning we want to go back to the book that we've been laboring in. We want to stay in the book till we complete the book. And we still won't have it all. <laughs> Amen. You can never exhaust the word of God. The more he give, the more we have opportunities to share with someone else. Yes. Now, we have been laboring in the book of Colossians, one of Paul's prison epistles. We've looked at what Paul had to say to the church what he had to say to the church of, at Colossae is also being said to the church in Colleen. We found out that Paul poured out his heart to the saints at Colossae. He instructed them on how they should live as children of God. He prays for them. He said he did it faithfully. He commends them for the work that they were doing. 
But then he went on to do a fourth thing. He warned them of the danger that they were facing in the form of false teaching. There were those who were going among the saints saying that what Paul had shared with them was not enough. See, yeah, what Paul has said is good, but we need a little bit more. So Paul wrote this epistle to the Colossians to straighten out some of this stuff that was going around being and being shared with the saints. We're looking at what God has accomplished on our behalf. He's already he's already accomplished these things. We mentioned before in verse 13, he had delivered us. He has translated us out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son. He has redeemed us. And because of his shed blood, God is willing and we know he's able because of the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God is able and willing to forgive us. Because of what Jesus Christ has already done. Not only that, we mentioned the fact that he has also reconciled us. I want to say to Brother uh, Sunday School teacher this morning, thank you for your facilitating the Sunday School lesson, both Sunday School teachers. Because there was a time when the Gentile world was not in God's uh, not in a relationship with the Lord. It wasn't God's fault. It was their fault. There was a time when the Gentile world as well as the Jewish as well as the Jewish world went against God. Yeah, both went against God. The Jews were against him although they claimed they were serving the true and living God, but they were doing it in a manner that was not totally acceptable unto God. Right. And the Gentiles, they, 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 just, they had walked away. They had gone about their merry way. But it was always in God's plan to reconcile both the Jews and the Gentiles yeah. in one body. Yeah. You say, okay, well, what, what body are you talking about? I'm talking about the body of Christ. Yeah. Talking about the body of which Christ is the head. He is the foundation. The scripture talk about him as being a cornerstone. In other words, Christ is all and in all. Mm -hmm. I think the statement was mentioned, I'm going to say it again as we move on, that we are no longer I can say we now, we Christians are no longer at war with God. There was a time when we were, but no longer. 
scripture teaches us that we are to live in the peace that God has already forged. Remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. He said, finally, my brethren, finally, brethren, rather, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. He said to those saints, be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. In Ephesians 2.14, I, I think y'all went over that this morning, but I want to say again, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the wall, the middle wall of partition between us, between whom? Between the Jews and Gentiles. We've already stated, and I want to say again, not only do we have peace with God, we operate in the peace of God. Right. See, it's one thing to have peace with God. Then it's another thing to be operating in the peace of God. In Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. All of this is because of what our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did for us has done for us did for us and is doing for us right now yes. because of what he did because of who he is we are now reconciled unto the father there's a scripture that says if any man be in Christ He's a new creature, a new creation. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, old things are passed away. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, behold, all things are become new. Yeah. We ought to walk different now. We ought to talk different now. We are to act different than now. Why? Because we have a live, vibrant relationship through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that we are reconciled, we have been reconciled, we are reconciled unto God the Father, we are to share our hope, our faith with others. Amen? Because we are reconciled, we have been reconciled unto the Father. Because of the work of the Son, we ought to love each other. Yes, sir. Am I right about it, church? Because there was a time when we were not reconciled. There was a time when we were not one with the Father. There was a time when we were out of the commonwealth of safety. All right. There was a time when we did not have Christ. 
Well, thanks be unto God. Amen. Thanks be unto God that now he has made it possible for us to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith in faith through the grace of God. For we are saved by his grace. Yes, yeah. Through faith, but by his grace. Because if God didn't want to save us, nothing you or I could do to persuade him to save us. I said if he didn't want to do it. But it's always in the heart of God to give salvation to those who would accept it. He doesn't force it upon us. He didn't force it upon us. He doesn't for enforce it. He doesn't force it upon the world. Right. He leaves it in the hand, or should I say, in the will of man. Right. Whosoever will. Yes. And those who will, he will not turn away. Right. Now I want to pick up in verse 23 in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, which was preached to every creature, every, every person which is under heaven, where oh, I, Paul, Paul said, I am made a minister. I think we've said it before, we'll say it one more time as we move forward. Know what you believe. Know who you believe. Know why you believe what you believe. This word, if, this word if is not a conditional clause. This word if could be translated without doing damage to the scripture since you continue in the faith. It is expected that a Christian will continue in the faith. Grounded and so. And not be so easily swayed by all of this stuff that's going around today. Right. You have people saying some of everything concerning God today. Some are even saying if God is so good, if he's so compassionate, so kind, and so loving, why do humans suffer so much? Why do Christians suffer so much? What they're suggesting is that God is not good. What they're suggesting is that God is not trustworthy. That's what they're suggesting. But let me just set the record straight. It's not God's fault that all this stuff is going on today. You see, God left man with a free will. Didn't he do it, church? Let me say it one more time. God left man with a free will. Man has now the ability or the capacity to do right. He has now the ability, the capacity to think right. He has the ability, the capacity to walk right. Yeah. He has now the ability, the capacity to talk right. right. But he got to avail himself of this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Paul goes on to say in verse 24, who now rejoice, talking about it, who now rejoice in my sufferings. Right. He said, I rejoice in my suffering for you. 
and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ right. in my flesh yeah. for his body's sake, which is the church. I thank God for this apostle for writing what he wrote. I thank God for this apostle who saw that man really needed to have a good understanding of what has already been done. Man needs to have a good understanding as to what is being done. Man needs to have a good understanding as to what God has already promised that he's going to continue to do. Let, let me just mention one thing. I know what he said. The Lord said, I'll never. He said, I'll never. He didn't say, I'll never save you. No, but he did say, I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. Uh, I never get enough of hearing, and you say, well, brother, I've heard that all or most of my life, but I've never get enough of hearing what the Lord says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul said, I told you, Corinthians, he said, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. When I get to that word, that which I also received, I, I pause right there. Because this apostle who was once called Saul, whom we know as Paul, this apostle was given some things that other disciples were not given. You said, wait a minute here now. Didn't God tell all of the disciples everything that he told Paul? No, he didn't. Paul comes up with some things that's mind-boggling. Paul comes up with some things that he called God's secret. Paul comes up with some things that he referred to as God's mysteries. I heard the brother in Sunday school let's say this morning that if God want to keep secret from man, he can keep a secret from man until he's ready uh, to reveal it unto him. You see, there was something that was kept secret from uh, the apostles who followed Jesus in his earthly ministry. There were some things he did not tell them. Uh, there was something that Jesus uh, did not see fit to uh, expose his disciples to. But I thank God today that when old man Paul came along, when old man Paul was converted, from fighting against God. You said, wait a minute, I thought Paul was always on God's side. Well, Paul thought the same thing at one time. But when Paul was converted from fighting against God and from fighting against the body of Christ, the Lord had something to say to him that he did not say to the other apostles. You see, the other apostles didn't know much about uh, the fact that God was going to one day bring in the body of Christ, which we know today as the church. You see, the church is the body of Christ. You see, the church is Christ's work on behalf of man. In his gospel message I was talking about a while ago, Paul said, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ did what? Christ died for our sins yes, 
according to the scripture. I said, he died for our sin according to the scriptures. And he was buried according to the scriptures. And he rose again the third day according to the scripture. God has done all right by his children. God had done all that needed to have been done for his children. Someone said, well, I, in 19, 19, in 20 and 24, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. I'm going to resolve that I'm going to do better than I did in 23. But just let me, let me share something with you. Uh, you in and of yourself is not going to do any better in 24 than you did in 23 if you were not trusting in the Lord. I say, if you were not trusting in the Lord, if you were not leaning and depending on his guidance, if you were not taking him at his word, you won't do any better in 24 than you did in 23. But I dare you, I dare you to say, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life. Lord, I need you. I need you to set me free. Lord, I need you. I need you to walk with me. Lord, I need you. I need you to talk with me. Lord, I need you. I need you to let me fellowship with you. Lord, I need you. I need your mercy. Lord, I need you. I need your grace. Lord, I need you. I need you to have compassion on me. Lord, I need you. I need your kindness. Lord, I need you. I need your mercy. Lord, I need you. I need your love. Isn't God good, church? I said, isn't he good? Yes, he's good. He's good to me. Yes, he's good. He's good to you. Yes, he's good. He's good to us. Yes, he's good. God is good to man, period. God is even good to those who do not know him as Lord and Savior. He woke them up this morning just like he woke us up. But I've said it before, I'm going to say it one more time. The difference between us and them is they won't give him credit for touching him with the finger of his love. But we Christian. We said he woke me up this morning. Didn't he do it, church? He started me on my way. Yes, he did. He brought me down the road. When I woke up this morning, I had Jesus on my mind. When I woke up this morning, I had prayer on my mind. When I woke up this morning, I began to thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. Thank you, Lord, for not dealing with me according to my sin. Thank you, Lord, for taking me out of the kingdom of Satan. Thank you, Lord, for placing me in the kingdom of your dear son. He's all right, church. I said, if I could preach right now, I said, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right, church. How many of you can say this morning that he's all right? How many of you can say this morning that it was all right yesterday? How many of you would say this morning that it was all right last night? How many of you can say this morning he's all right this morning? He's all right when I was traveling down the road. He's all right when I came into the house with the saints of God me. I said, he's all right. Yes, he's all right. Let me go on and close now. In verse 26, Paul mentioned the mystery of the secret uh, which had been hidden from ages and from generations. But now he said it's made known 
unto the saints of God, to whom God would make known that is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I said, he is my hope. I said, he is your hope. I said, he is our hope. He's man's hope. He's the hope of glory. Whom we preach, uh, warning every man and teach every man in all wisdom that we may be present every man, perfect in Jesus Christ. Let me just share with you right now that uh, in and of ourselves, there is no perfection in us. But because of what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, we're going to be perfect when we see him. I said we're going to be perfect when we see him down on this earth. We're going to have false down on this earth. We're going to have tribulation down on this earth. We're going to have trial. But when we see Jesus, I said when we see Jesus, everything is going to be all right. I said, everything is going to be all right. Why? Because of the gospel that Paul preached. What did this gospel say? Well, to the Greek, it was foolishness. What did this gospel say to the to the uh, to the to the Hebrew, to the Jews? It was a stumbling block. What does this gospel say to those of us who believe God? It is the wisdom of God. Lord, have mercy. No one. Now I'm closing now. No one of this man could say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. For it is the power of God. Unto whom? Unto what? Unto salvation. To whom? To everyone that believes it. Who's included? Jews and Gentile. Paul closes that statement by making this statement in verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. How shall the just live? The just shall live by faith. We don't live. We don't walk by sight. We're not smart enough. We don't have enough intelligence in and of ourselves. Uh, we can't figure God out. But what we can do is take him at his word. What we can do is believe him. What we can do is accept what he says. When he says, all oh, have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Take him at his word when he says the wages of sin is death. That is eternal separation. Yes, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Yes. Through our Lord and Savior yes. Jesus Christ. There may be someone listening and to this message right now you may be in this building or in some other place and have never taken God at his word and have never accepted his offer of salvation but you're now ready to say yes Lord you're now ready to say yes Lord I agree with you Lord that without Christ I'm a lost sinner. Without Christ, I have no hope of glory. Without Christ, I have no peace with God. Without Christ, I do not have the peace of God. If you're willing to say right now, Lord, I'm ready to accept you as my Lord and my Savior. My all in all. If you're ready now to say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me one of your saved children. 
thank you for forgiving. First of all, for, for forgiving sin. Mm -hmm. Original sin. Yes, sir. Thank you for forgiving that which Adam brought upon this world. Right. Right. And then going and thank him for forgiving you of continuing sin. Right. Somebody said, brother, there's no such thing as continuing sin. Are you trying to tell me that in the last year of the last month of the last week of the last day you've not done anything to displease the Father? Some may have done something to please him this morning, sitting right in the house. But I thank God that he's already taken care of that. I said, I thank him that we'll never have to come before him and give an account of our sin right. because he took care of it. Yeah. Where did he take care of it? Yeah. At the cross? I said, at the cross? Yes, where I first, help me somebody, I first saw the light. Yeah. And nobody helped me here now. Right. And the burden of of my heart rolled away. It was there. I said, it was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, what about now? And now I'm happy. Now I'm blessed all the day. Even when I don't feel blessed, I'm still blessed. Even when I don't act like I'm blessed, I'm still blessed. Even when I don't tell you I'm blessed, I'm still blessed because of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've already accomplished. Thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you promised that you're going to continue to do on behalf of your people. Thank you for salvation. And Father, if there's someone under the sound of my voice right now who heard your word, and have not yet achieved or accepted peace with you or made peace with you by accepting Jesus Christ. Lord, let them accept him now. As Lord, as Savior. It is in Jesus' name we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. In his name we say thank you. Amen. There may be someone in this building or in some other building right now who have not yet made peace with God, who have not accepted the peace of God. We invite you to make that decision now by trusting in the Lord. Now is the time Someone said, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Someone said, I'll do it a little later on this evening. You're not promised. I'm not promised to be here later on this evening. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now is the acceptable time. The Lord said today that you hear my voice. Today that you hear my word resonating in your heart. Now is the time. Someone asked the question, what must I do 
What must I do to be saved? Softly and tenderly. Could you answer that question? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess him with your mouth. Believe on him in your heart. And you shall. And for me. Not that you might be, but you come shall. Home. Come home. Come home. You shall be saved. Ye who are weary. Earnestly, tenderly. Jesus is calling. Calling, O sinner. He's calling come for home. you. Verse 3. Time Say, is now fleeting. Come home. The moments are passing. Passing for you and for me. Shadows are gathering. Deathbeds are coming. Now is the time to come. Coming to the Lord for you and for me. And receive his marvelous gift. Verse 4. Oh, for the wonderful. Now is the time. Wonderful love he has promised. Promise for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you. Please be seated. Come home. The Lord has pleaded with man to come home. He's pleaded with man to get right, to get right with God. Earnestly, tenderly. Jesus is calling. 